Dorrell, Dolman Dorrell. Um, it's an interesting name, actually, and I always uh, worry that I mispronounce it. Is it Dolman Dorrell or Darrell? Yeah, Darrell. You did mispronounce it did slightly. It? So yeah. Paul Dolman Darrell. Yeah. In the north, you're Dolman Dorrell. Yeah, well, you know, northerners can't speak. <laughs> that has been said before, yes. Um, how old are you, Paul? Um, I'm 37. Yeah, and we were, we were saying that realistically we should be interviewing you for our Amazing Losers series because you are an amazing loser, but you are obviously a very vocal part of the site and you, you are considering yourself still to be losing and to, to toning up, probably. So, I mean, where were you when you first started? I mean, at what point was this and, and how much did you weigh? Um, so, I was 95 kilos um, um, at the start, um, which I think is just over 15 stone for those in Old British. Um, and um, uh, that, that was where I was in um, January, um, so, so of this year. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, that is the highest I'd ever reached, and I think it was also the point where you know, heading towards that sort of big 100 number mm. uh, really terrified me mm. um, um, uh, and made me think, wow, I better do something about this. Mm. And I tapped in some of my numbers as well into um, uh, a fat comparison type site. How fat are you compared to the rest of the population? Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, I was um, slightly worried to sort of find out that I, um, um, that I was fatter than 97% of the population in my age group and size, yeah. um, uh, so my age group and, um, uh, in particular. Um, and that, that, that just, that I thought, really? Really? Am I really that fat? Um, you know, and, and though I, I don't think I was an extreme case, mm. uh, um, I was obese, my uh, BMI was 33, my body fat was 35%. Mm. Um, I was fat. Yeah, and and how had you got fat? What happened? Um, uh, the, the 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 honest truth is snacking probably is is the thing I am most guilty of. In fact, I'm still guilty of it today. Um, I am I'm no saint, mm. um, and uh, I think I didn't really used to eat that much. Yeah, mm. uh, I know that sounds really strange, mm. but I I used to be famed for never finishing a meal. Right. Okay. Yeah. No matter how, and I used to eat really tiny portions, yeah, really tiny portions. Um, but I, I would think nothing of drinking four or five cans of Coke a day. Um, um, and at my very worst, um, when I was younger, sometimes that was up in 10, 12, 14 cans a day. Um, and then combined with a snacking habit um, that um, would genuinely treat occasionally a packet of chocolate digestives as a perfectly acceptable snack, maybe slightly over the top, um, um, but reasonably okay. Um, um, you know, I sort of sat there shocked once um, um, since I've been on the diet going, these are 86 calories <laughs> of biscuit. <laughs> biscuit. Like that means there's like 1,600 calories in the small packet. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That's a bit of and I, I consider myself to be a bright, intelligent person with many skills and um, resources that I can pull at a fingertip. And I, 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 you know, my wife just looked at me and went, "Well, how many calories did you think there were in a biscuit?" <laughs> Was it was it a willful ignorance then? You you just decided this. You just hadn't ever connected with the the mechanics behind it, the the mathematics of, of weight gain. Um, I kind of knew stacking was bad. Yeah, I, I but I I think one I just hadn't really realised how big I was getting. Mm. Yeah, um, the the teasing for lack of a better word had definitely massively increased. Mm. I'm a strong, big personality who dishes it out, yeah? And and actually people take that as an invitation to dish back. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, a very large percentage of that dishing back often was weight orientated as opposed to like serious matters. Yeah. And people would think nothing of actually criticizing me for my weight and uh, because I'm that 
big, strong personality that yeah. can take it. Yeah? If, you, if you're in there giving shit to people, they can give it back, can't they? You know, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, and so so people will pick on your weight, and um, um, and you know, I can take it, but you know, a little bit of me sat there and went, you know, well, how big am I getting? You know, um, how big am I? And I don't think. I really knew that, and and someone after me or afterwards said, "Well, you must have known you were fat." Mm. Well, yeah, of course I knew I was fat. Yeah, but I don't. I you know we don't really have very good um, understanding of our, our our body image. Yeah. Um, um, and so I don't. I don't think I thought I was as fat as I was. There was a great um, quote from John Warburton, uh, who wrote one of the weight loss diaries, who said that you know he he really struggled to identify himself as a fat person because. He, every time he looked in the mirror, he could just see his face and he didn't sort of necessarily, you know, if you hold your face in certain ways, uh, you can always go, well, well you no know, double chin there, you know, I'm all right. What's, what's everyone talking about? But it, it's that sense of deluding yourself, I suppose, or, or just not wanting to say. And, and it's interesting you say because th there's a real reaction from men often to, to this sort of the idea of BMI. And as flawed as it is, um, it does still give you Right. Well, you are here on this journey. It told um, me it was too high. Yeah. And and as a measurement, that was a reasonably precise measurement. Yeah. Um, mm. um, for all of its flaws, yeah. I, I was too fat. Um, a side profile picture, because I happened to take before and after pictures. Mm. Um, um, the side profile picture of my before. I'll I'll insert I them somewhere here. I can't believe the shock I personally felt at that point in time. Yeah. It, it was a little bit like having a giant suitcase attached to me mm. at the front of my um, um, body. Yeah. And, and I had no real no realization that, that that this massive thing was quite as big as it was. Mm. What did you do at that point in January then? What did you decide to change? Um, I, so I'm a big fan of changing as little as possible, and, and you know, I kind of sit there and uh, you know listen to some of the other um, uh, amazing losers and future amazing loser interviews, and quite often people say I'm inherently lazy, mm. uh, and I, I don't think I am an inherently lazy mm. person. Actually, I think we're all relatively inherently lazy yeah. people. Like, we want to get maximum results for minimum effort. No, I don't think that's a, a bad thing. No. Uh, and so I wanted minimum effort. I really didn't want to exercise that hard. I, I really didn't want to give up any food mm. that I liked. Um, I really didn't want to do very much, to mm. be honest. But I did want to lose belly. And it, it was uh, interesting, actually, we were talking before, and you were saying that actually the idea of approaching exercise was actually something that was a, a point of fear. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think so. You know, I, I find it strange that as a child, you know, I, I used to exercise all the time. You know, I think nothing of playing three hours after football after school. Mm. Um, and really, I think I had reached a point where, in all honesty, uh, you know, I worried about the fact that my son, you know, if I just wanted to do something with him, it would leave me panting. Yeah. Um, or um, a, 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 the idea of running five kilometres. I, I, I just cannot tell you, like, really? Like, come on. I'm going to run maybe 20 steps. I'm going to sit there and think this is a little bit too hard and I'm going to stop. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just it's just other things. I, I'd love to play football again, but, you know, um, I kind of feel as you get older, you know, if you're pursuing a sport, you have to be good at it. <laughs> um, and like the idea of, sort of going and playing football, you know, I just feel like I get laughed at. Like, mm. if you haven't played football for 10 years, you can hardly run around this pitch, let alone survive 90 minutes. <laughs> five, five aside would be just as hard. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think the thought of exercise terrified me. Mm. And so what, what did you change when you identified that there were these points and you, you follow... Uh, my school or I follow your school, we'll argue about that later, about uh, coming up with some rules that you wanted to change. What, yeah. what, what so were your I, rules? I made some very, I made, um, I think, four or five rules. Um, um, and and I, I posted them as a blog. Mm. I tried to sort of get some sort of, um, um, uh, put it out there in public. Um, this is what I'm going to do. You know, I obviously didn't then go and try and publicize that blog to a million people. <laughs> Um, I don't think we could care that much, but um, um, I, it, it meant I wrote them down. Mm. Yeah, that's probably the best way of describing it. I wrote them down some rules, 
And, and the, these rules were very much about taking control of the environment in a way. So uh, one of the rules was um, I can buy any snack I want, I can buy any drink I want, I can still drink Coke, um, I had a particularly fond passion for Jaffa Cakes, yes. um, and uh, I, I could still buy those things. Um, but I could only buy a snack size amount um, um, one at a time. No multi-packs, no stores in the cupboard. I could buy it whenever I wanted. Mm. If I want a Jack of Cake right now, I could go out and buy some Jack of Cakes. Um, but I will only buy a snack amount. So, and, and taking that to an extreme, 12, which is how many you get in a pack of Jack Cakes, um, that's not a snack amount. No. Three is a snack. So if I buy three, the other nine must be thrown in the bin. Um, um, because that would be storage of a snack. And, and it sounds <laughs> it sounds infantile, yeah. I, I, I view myself as a successful man who has a good career, earns money, lives a good life, and everything I do I have control of and I'm successful. <laughs> this idea that I have to throw Jack breaks away in case I might eat them is kind of ludicrous, yeah. Um, I can buy one can of Coke, but I can never buy a six pack or a twelve pack or a 10 pack or a 24 pack. Could you go back to the shop six times? Yeah, I can go back to the shop six times. Um, You're um, not going to, are you? Okay. Um, but the good thing is you kind of don't. No. And not only that, the, the very task of going to the shop six times yeah. <laughs> is almost as stupid as the idea of exercising. At this point. <laughs> um, and, um, and it kind of works. And, and I decided that I would exercise. I signed up for one of these infomercial um, um, uh, do it at home exercise um, videos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in this particular case, it's called Focus T25, and I, I watched one of these dreadful American videos, and I thought, there's no way I can do that. But at least there's no way I can do that in the privacy of my own home. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's only 25 minutes a day. It's only for 10 weeks. I can probably do it. Mm. I can, I, and even if I don't do it properly, at least I've done something. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, and I decided that I would walk um, to my train station rather than jumping on the bus about four stops. Mm. Um, so not a massive change. Um, and, and, and so that was it. I was going to um, only eat one snack at a time. Um, I, I was going to monitor what food I was eating. I didn't care what I was eating um, or how much, but I was going to at least begin tracking what I would eat. Mm. Um, and I thought I'd then try this sort of newfangled five two diet um, and see if I could start starving myself a little bit. Yeah, that vaguely worked, um, and then combined it with um, this exercise five times a week for twenty five minutes. And, and let me be clear, I, I don't think I stuck to any one of my rules during that diet. I, yeah. I don't think I. I'm not this sort of paragon of um, yeah. uh, willpower. Mm. And and was it the fact that what do you think had the most effect of, of your rules? What what do you personally feel was the one that that made the most impact? Uh, today, and I think I was convinced of this quite early on. Um, um, and and I I think the science is reasonably okay for this in in weight loss, even though science is not perfect in weight loss. No. Um, exercise doesn't really help you lose weight. No. Um, diet helps you lose weight. Exercise helps you from putting weight back on. Mm. Um, um, so it's very good for uh, maintaining, and I think it's absolutely key to what you're doing. But the reality is I think the diet was more important than the exercise. Um, and so I, I think either the 5-2 itself um, um, or um, the, um, uh, the snack rule would have been probably the biggest thing. Yeah. If I was going to, I, I, I think they're both relatively equal. Yeah. Um, the, the snack, the, the 5 2 helped with like short term discipline, um, but the snack thing was a very nice reminder that I, I have to take control of the environment mm. that surrounds me. Um, and it, it meant I didn't feel like I'd given too much up. You know, yeah. honestly, I was still drinking Coca Cola three months later. Yeah. Um, I, I was still having bad snacks three months later. And since then, I have actually given up a number of things, but not because I felt like they were a big step change, but no. because actually it was quite easy for me to do that. And also, what you're talking about is that you, you made small changes from where you were in January, 
but then that was very different to where you were say in March or April because then yeah. you can make another small change again so actually going from you know this reduced coke consumption or this reduced yeah. you know working on five two to actually sort of tweaking it's exactly what I found using the same methods of making your own rules up initially yeah was that it became very it, it was mine and therefore I didn't mind adding things to it because I could go further down the line and say okay I've, I've work that out and I'm going to keep doing 5-2 because I, I did 5-2 as well um, and now I don't actually mind looking at say intermittent fasting of 16-8 which again I know you've done as well. Yeah. Now I, 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 all the way I have, I, I never, it's never a high quantity of rules because remember I want the minimal effort yeah mm. um, but all the way I started to then go well um, you know should I, should I change another rule? Um, yeah. Should I make a little bit of a tweak to the pre-existing rules I've yeah. created? Um, and, um, uh, and these little rules have worked astonishingly well for me, mm. um, um, uh, better than I expected, to be honest. Yeah. And, and I had set myself ridiculously ambitious goals. Mm. Uh, um, and, and today I still roughly follow it. Um, um, I'm at a point where I've lost um, about 25 kilos, about four and a half stone. Um, um, and I'm now only 15% body fat. Um, in fact, 90% um, of people are fatter than me if I would sort of use the same stats the other way. And, and I'm still sitting there going, no, I can, I can beat the fat a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but I still am using tiny rules to achieve that. Little things that can change in my lifestyle. Mm. Right? I, I don't want to give up things. I still like cake. I still like bad food. I, I, I'm never going to be a payer. Yeah, no. I'm never going to be a, you know, just serve me um, plain chicken. And I, I have respect for some of the friends who've gone down that path. I, I, maybe that path will work for other people because it fits their little rules, but it wouldn't wouldn't work for me because it would be too much of a shift. Do you know, this is um, because, as you said, you're a successful person. You run your own businesses. I, I think that sort of um, that controlling mindset for people who potentially are are those sorts of have that personality of wanting to be owning their own experience and their own weight loss. Um, I think that that approach is is fantastic. Um, it shows that we're both completely controlling uh, type A personalities. <laughs> so what? Just uh, you know, the last couple of minutes, give us uh, where you're going to next, because obviously, as you say by uh, BMI metrics or anything, you could stop now, you've done it, congratulations, you're at your goal. What what yeah. do you see as your progression now? Why are you still... Involved? Why am I still going? Mm. Um, I, I think there are a number, th number of things there that, that, that contribute to it. Um, um, the first is, and, and you see this occasionally with people you come across, um, when you are losing weight, you have learned to eat to lose weight. Yeah. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, people go, "Yeah, I think I've got it. it's brilliant. I can eat whatever I want." Yeah. Um, and two, three years later, they they've actually astonishingly returned not only to their former weight but beyond yeah. their former weight. Yeah. Um, um, and, and and it just shows you how quickly you can reverse your fortune. Mm. Uh, and and so I think it, I I said in my head when it first started, you know. It's terrifying, but I think this might be a two-year venture. Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, imagine doing that around a New Year's resolution. Like, one year is not enough. I might need two. Yeah. Um, and within that, I had kind of said it might take me a year to lose the weight. It then, might be take me a year to retrain my habits to maintain. Mm. But I discovered something else whilst losing weight that really worried. me. Um, and, it, and, it, and from all the data I've got, um, it kind of turns out to be true, um, and I hadn't realized quite how true it might be, which is that as you're losing weight, your TDEE, the amount of calories you can burn a day, for, for those not used to the acronym, um, it drops. Mm. And it, it doesn't drop just a small amount, mm. it, it drops quite a large amount. In fact, it drops so quickly that what you thought may previously have been a deficit mm. uh, ends up being a surplus. Mm. Um, um, 
despite the fact you still think you're starving yourself and you think you're reducing your food and mm. you're applying all this wonderful willpower, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and it became clear to me that um, uh, though I have not lost that much lean body mass, so that's muscle um, and water, um, but muscle in particular, mm. uh, the reality is that if I want to um, eat some of the foods I'd love to eat, and I'm not suggesting returning to my old ways, but if I want to not have to go through an endless constant monitoring of my life, yeah, and no, um, the waving of diet and stuff like that, that it, it became clear to me that I needed to build muscle. Mm. And, and I'm not necessarily talking about becoming some sort of rich mm. six pack, um, 17 year old, yeah? Mm. <laughs> seven years old, yeah? Um, that's not gonna happen. But I, what I realized is that a, a, another key stage for me was building up muscle, but actually getting my TDEE higher again, mm. um, rather than too low and having to sort of be a sort of just a skinny, skinny man. And there'll be people listening to this video going, I'll be just happy with a skinny man. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I, I felt I needed to go that little bit further. And, and so I still see myself in many ways in the fat battle. Mm. Um, I, I still look at the little bits of me and I still think, yeah, I've still got three kilos roughly of fat I can lose. And let me tell you, three kilos is hard at this stage. Mm. I lost three kilos in like two weeks in the beginning. Mm. These days, I'm, I don't think I'm going to lose like three, four months. Mm. Um, so, I, so I have switched to um, doing some weightlifting. And in hindsight, I wish I had um, done weightlifting a little bit earlier. Right. Um, probably, I think, the biggest mistake I made, um, um, sort of diving into cardio, Mm. Um, because cardio burns calories, yeah. Uh, rather than realizing that actually muscle burns calories as well. Yeah, yeah. So and th th I'm a skinny man. I'm, I'm never gonna. These, these are never gonna be guns, but <laughs> they could be a bit bigger. Yeah, fair enough. Excellent. Well, I mean, congratulations on the the success that you've had so far, and uh, we look for forward to following and finally moving you from a Friday of a uh, future amazing loser to a Monday of an amazing loser. I mean, as I say, it applies now already, but fantastic work. Okay. Excellent. Take care. Thanks a lot.